Buenos dias! Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Today we're going to take a look at how to write data to the Raspberry Pi Pico's internal file system. Now we're not talking about this type of file, nor this type of file. These are sort of museum pieces nowadays. Uh, luckily for us, the Pico has an internal file system and we can write data to it and extract that data very easily. And that's what we're going to cover today. We are going to cover what the internal file storage is, what you may want to write to that file, limitations and locations of the file, wiring and breadboard example for this really easy and simple circuit, three MicroPython program examples, and finally how to format data so that you can import it into a spreadsheet. Now you may be wondering, it's a microcontroller, why would I want to store data on it? Well, think about some of the projects that you may be considering in the future. Uh, perhaps a temperature logger. Uh, you've got a temperature and humidity sensor and you want to record that over the course of a day, a week, a month, uh, etc. Uh, you have uh, a, a room in your home that you want to determine when access is made to that room. Or it could be a closet or a safe, a variety of things of that nature. Um, perhaps you want to measure the frequency of something changing. Could be temperature, uh, it could be an on-off switch, etc. Uh, you may want to record how fast and how often your hamster or gerbil runs in its little wheel. All of that can be recorded and stored right on the Pico without using any external devices. Your files are stored in the same location as your Python program. So when you create a data file and you write it, it's going into that same area where you store your Python programs. Very, very simple. You're limited to a total of two megabytes of space there, and that's shared across all your data files that are stored on it. So you do have to be careful of that. More importantly, the file size maximum is 128,000 kilobytes. So you do have to be uh, prudent about what you're putting in a data file and how much data you're trying to put into it. Otherwise, you could corrupt your file for trying to write too much data in there. Wiring it could not be more simple. We'll take a quick look at a Fritzing diagram in a breadboard example. As you can see, there's nothing. Over here at the breadboard, there's nothing. Just our USB cable that we normally program it with. So this one's a super easy one for wiring up and everybody should be able to handle that one with, it, with ease. For the first example, we want to learn about the open, write, read, and close statements uh, or methods used within this program. Now the first thing we need to do is to create an object uh, that will be for our class called open. And I'm just using the word data file as a variable name to hold that. And I'm giving the file name mydata.txt. Seemed appropriate for what we're doing here. Of course you can call it whatever you want. I would suggest keeping file names simple so that you maintain a greater chance of reliability. Uh, the most important one is this uh, quote W here, quote unquote W, and it's a lowercase w. That denotes that we're going to be writing data instead of reading data. So that whole statement there creates and opens a file. If the file already exists, we're going to overwrite it. If it doesn't exist, it will create it and prepare it for writing. The next statement, datafile.write, puts the data into that file. And we would just simply have parentheses and then inside there, quotes, uh, whatever you want to put in your text file, and then close quote. That'll, or a variable containing a string data just like that. Finally, when you're done writing that statement, you would close that file with the datafile.close method. Very, very simple. Uh, we're going to print a statement uh, just so that we see the dividing line between writing data and then reading data down below. To read this data, we're going to use uh, the same open statement, but this time notice that it's quote, lowercase r quote, denoting we're going to read from the file. And then we're going to have a variable that will read data in with the data file dot read method. 
So when that command executes, it will take the data from the file and put it into that variable. Here, obviously, we're printing it. And then finally, we're going to uh, close that data file. That's just very good housekeeping. You open something later on in your program after you're done reading or writing to it, you should close it. And then finally, a note that uh, we're all done running the program. So let's run it and see what happens. It's pretty uneventful. And that's it. Uh, it wrote data to the file, and then we read it, and I printed it here, and we're all done. Now you may, may be wondering, well, where is the file? Uh, can I look at it directly? Absolutely. So we'll select Open in Thani on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and this is the file that we just created, mydata.txt. So we'll open that. And there's the data statement that we wrote into it. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty useless uh, example because it's only writing one line of data into the file. So in our next example, we'll expand on that a little bit. So we'll go ahead and close this. In our second example, um, we're doing many of the same things except for we're going to write multiple lines of data. Uh, so we'll open the file. We'll create a variable that contains the number of lines, and we're going to count out uh, where we can write five times in this while loop, or uh, five lines of data. So we'll say uh, line is the string uh, of the num lines variable, converting an integer to a string. Uh, the text statement will equal the line plus text line of data. And then you'll notice I added a, a slash n here, and in uh, Python and, and most operating systems, the slash end is new lines. So that way our, it isn't one big long line of data, it will be five separate lines of data. And that's a very important part of what you have to do in this process. And then we're going to write uh, the file, or write data to the file using datafile.write method and then the variable text. And that prepares the data for writing. It actually didn't put it into the file. The next statement, datafile.flush, will physically write it into the system. Normally, like in our last example, that writing the data, this prepared it, but the close statement wrote it. Well, we don't want to close it, because then when we go to open it, write, we'll write from the beginning of the file again. So we use flush to perform that action. Now we're going to repeat that five times as we write five separate lines of data, to the file, and then we'll print a notice that we've uh, wrote the data, and then we'll read it back in to a variable called text data. And uh, our open statement's the same as it was before. We're going to do the data file read as before. We'll print it, close it, and then uh, put a note to us letting us know the whole operation and program is completed. We'll run it, and as you can see, we wrote data to the file, and then one, two, three, four, five, text line of data. And that was here. Let's open that up as we did before. And it should be the same file, just containing our new data. One, two, three, four, five, text line of data, just as we had shown right here. Hopefully that's pretty good for you so far. Very simple, very straightforward, and very similar to most other programming languages. Now finally, for the next step, our third example program is going to be something you're most probably going to want to do. And we're going to write five lines of data, this time even more complex data, but we're going to prepare it for further analysis. And a great program to do that with is a spreadsheet. So let's go through the program, and then we'll walk you through the whole process of getting this data into a spreadsheet. We're opening the file, just as we have been. Of course, we're writing this time. We're going to have a variable for the number of lines, our loop, our loop counter, uh, our statement of creating the text string that we're writing for each line. And this time, you'll notice it's line plus, and I added a comma here, text line of data, comma. And then we would put other numeric values uh, using the plus statement all across here to add in other uh, important pieces of information, such as uh, temperature, humidity, date, whatever you wanted to record across here. 
Then we write that and flush it just as we did in the previous example. And then we close the file to complete the operation. Now we go through on the next step here and uh, we're just going to uh, read it just as we did in the last example. But it's also in a format that we can do more with. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to erase the data down here by click, right clicking and select clear. We will run this. And here's all of our new data that's in that file. And we can verify it by opening it here. As you can see, our commas are still in the file, and that makes it very easy for us to import and manipulate this data in a spreadsheet. But right now, it's actually residing inside the Pico. We need to get it out of there. So what we can do is simply click on File, Save Copy on this computer, and I'm going to navigate to our internal file system folder that I've got set up on my Windows program or on my Windows computer and I'm going to save it into that directory. And there's one there already. I was already doing this earlier to test it. We'll now go to LibreOffice Calc. That's the spreadsheet pro program. I will select Open. There is our file uh, that we want to open, My Data. And it's going to take a minute and analyze it, and it's going to say, hey, wait a minute, this probably is data that we need to parse out for the person. And it automatically comes up with the right suggestions, as you can see down here. So I will click OK, and there is the data, and each piece of data is in its own cell. And then from there, you can graph out your data, further manipulate it mathematically, or whatever you want to do uh, with that data. How handy is that? How simple is that uh, for a file system that's internal to the Raspberry Pi Pico? Now, I would like to mention that there is another way uh, to store data, and that's on a micro SD card. And I've got another video on that as well that uh, will be coming out in the near future. So look for that one if you're into uh, saving data from your uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. Hopefully you found that information useful and beneficial in your Raspberry Pi Pico endeavors and journeys. I would like to mention that the information uh, presented in this, the Fritzing diagram, as useless as it is, and the uh, MicroPython programs are available for download on our companion website. There's a link down below in the descriptions. There's also a table of contents on that companion website showing all the videos that we have available for you. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.